Coach Mack, how are you? I'm great. Well, thanks so much for being here. Happy to join you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Expectations has been the word that's been thrown around left and right for this team. Do you embrace that as a coach or do you try to push out those external expectations? I think coaches probably uh, blow it off a little bit more than other people simply because it's it's never been more difficult to predict what a season is going to be like as it is today with the transfer portal and immediate eligibility. You don't really know the roster makeups. You know, five years ago, you kind of knew who the freshmen were and how much they played. Now they're going to be sophomores, and here's their incoming guy. They had a transfer sitting out that'll be eligible this year. You don't know any of that anymore. So it's very difficult to project what teams are going to look like. Um, you know, it's projections are based off and and in large part what happened last year, but especially what happens late in the season. And that's what people remember, and we played great in the, in the Big East tournament, um, had some good success in the NCAA tournament. So that's why we are where we are. Um, but, you know, the players aren't afraid of them. Uh, the, the reality of it a lot goes into being a good college basketball player. There's a tremendous amount of sacrifice and discipline and hard work uh, unselfish approach that goes into that and if you do all that then you better expect to be successful so uh, when we step on the floor we expect to win and uh, you know I'm, o I'm okay with our guys feeling that way. Last year's run seemed improbable to most injuries were faced of course but then you make a run in March Madness go to the round of 32 what was so special about last year? Mm, a lot of things probably probably the growth you know from my perspective to, to know where we were in October it, when we were practicing and then those early preseason non-conference games in November into December, you know, we, we had a, our shares of up and ups and ups and downs and probably more downs actually with the way we struggled to win a couple games and, and uh, uh, but to see that there was total buy-in and that that young group continued to listen and learn and grow uh, for us to get better every single month and, you know, we were a better team and February than we were January. We're a better team in March than we were February. And as a coach, you're, you're about daily progress. You know, can we get a little bit better today? And, and fortunately with that group last year, we were able to stack a lot of days on top of each other. Um, and as a result, we were playing pretty good basketball by the time it was over. We all watched Ryan Nemhard go down. You literally held him on the court and then also Ryan Kalkbrenner. How badly do you want this season for them and just to see them succeed after what they've been through? You know, first of all, they really attacked their rehabilitation uh, with a lot of maturity and a lot of hard work and a lot of discipline uh, to get themselves back as quickly as we possibly could, but also at a time when they were ready. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, Kalkbrenner's injury wasn't as bad as maybe we first thought. So, you know, he was out a couple, you know, two or three months. And it's, it's quite a process for our two to go through that. You know, it's your shooting hand and, you know, how we, once you get the cast off and you begin that, it's just, you know, you're starting over, you're, the muscle atrophy and how weak that wrist was uh, to get back to where he is now is a real credit to him. So we're, we're glad to have him back. Um, you know, they're kind of the bookends of what goes on offensively and defensively for us. Our two's pace and offense dictates how we play. And then Kalkbrenner's presence at the rim defensively uh, has a lot to do with how we've set up our defense as well. Another guy, of course, Trey Alexander, he had to step up big time for this team last season in some really pivotal moments, and we just saw him grow. I mean, as a freshman taking over a team like that, I remember watching the San Diego State game and just seeing a look of confidence in his face that I've never seen before and how he took over in the late moments of that. How have you seen him grow as a player? Well, you see, everybody saw it in front of their eyes last year. Uh, you know, he was thrown into a situation in a role that you know, frankly, we hadn't probably prepared him for. Uh, but, you know, he just showed a lot of maturity and being able to run the team and get us into our offense, make plays for himself, make plays for others, uh, and was always really good defensively as a freshman. So I think the confidence that came from that certainly carried over into his off-season training, and it's why we have a better version of Trey this year. He's, he's stronger, he's added 15 pounds of muscle. Uh, that's allowed him to even finish your contact better than he did a year ago, and, and we're gonna be counting on him for, for a lot this year. He's gonna play a huge role for our team, and I, I think he's prepared himself for that. Coach, you put in some work over the off-season, got one of the best names in the transfer po portal in Baylor Shireman. How important will, will Baylor be this season, and how does this depth compare to the teams you've coached in the past? This is probably the deepest team that I've had. 
uh, and hopefully we can stay that way. That means we we stay healthy. But uh, and you know the depth is not only there, there's really good players there, but we have some experience there, especially in the guard court with Sharif Mitchell and, and Francisco Farabello, guys that have are now in their fourth year of college basketball. That's really valuable, uh, and not a lot of coaches have that. Uh, you know have the luxury of having that kind of experience coming off off your bench. Uh, but you know I, I'm. Uh, you know, I'm really excited about the depth of this team, um, I, and and Baylor has been a really he's made a seamless transition into what we envisioned him to be in in our system. And you worry as a coach, you got four starters back. There's an expectation of you know where the shots are coming from and ball movement, and for Baylor to kind of be plopped down in the middle of that. And then just move the basketball, just turn down good shots to get his teammates great shots. I think he, I think our guys have realized, like you know, this guy's a lot of fun to play with. You know, he's he's going to get us some shots, and uh, you know, he's going to take some shots. Uh, but he he uh, his facilitating and his 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 court vision, uh, in my mind, is elite. And I, I I thought it was pretty good, but it's even better than I thought. You've been around this game for so long. What can take this team from good to great? Preseason ranking number nine, the highest in program history. What is going to be the separator? Well, we have to remain true to the unselfish core of our program. You know, we have a lot of guys that can really play. You know, those five starters in particular, all very talented. I think you could argue each one of them on a given night could score 20 points, and I think we have a couple guys on the bench that can do that as well. But not getting caught up in individual statistics and and really focusing on the success of our team and, and really celebrating the success of your teammates. If, if we can do that, the sky's the limit for this group. And, and they'll be like every season, there's some peaks and valleys and how you handle adversity, how you get through it. I'd like to think the fact that we had so much adversity last year that the guys that were part of that team understand that it's kind of the next guy up and you got to go back to work the next day. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you, so let's get to work. Uh, so I, I'm hopeful that, that that'll be the case, that the, the ball will continue to move and and we take a you know an unselfish approach defensively to make sure everybody's doing their job. Uh, because it, for us to reach our potential, we have to be elite defensively like we were a year ago. What do you think that potential is? Yeah, you know who knows. Uh, you know the reality of it is, is if if you can be in a position in late February, early March, where you're fighting for a conference title in a league like the Big East, all the other postseason stuff takes play, takes care of itself. You know you're going to have a great seed in the NCAA tournament. Obviously, the better seed you get, hopefully your draws are better with a chance to advance. But you know my hope would be that, like last year, you you're seeing a a noticeable improvement month to month as we move forward in the season and it, if we can do that um, and we're playing our, our best basketball in March there's there's nobody that I would be afraid to see. I think the streets of Omaha would completely shut down if this team made a Final Four or National Championship. Have you thought much about that? No, I don't think I think any coach that thinks a lot about like that uh, thinks like that probably is not in coaching very long. Uh, you, you have to be you know, as a coach, you have to be in the moment. You have to be about today and working to get better today. And if, if uh, you know, if things fall into place and we have an opportunity in March to do something like that, it'd be really special. And I'd love to do it for for the city of Omaha and the Creighton community. Uh, but we've got a lot of work to do before we worry about that. Reflecting back on when you took this job in 2010 versus where this program is right now, you're back in the Missouri Valley days, um, playing in that conference. Now you're in the Big East, preseason number one as well a number nine preseason ranking. How far have you come as a coach, but also as a program as a whole? Well, it felt like in 2010, somebody would hold a light bulb over top of us when we were doing an interview, and now we got all this fancy equipment. <laughs> so that's, that's one, one difference. But, uh, you know, it's, it's really hard to believe. Uh, you know, when I came here, there, were no, there was no talk of changing conferences. And the landscape in college athletics really hadn't gone there yet. Uh, and the fact that we were prepared when we moved from the Valley to the Big East is really credit to Bruce Rasmussen and his staff to make sure we have this beautiful championship center that we practice in so that we can compete from a facility and resource standpoint with the people that we have to play against now. So I think it's been a, a fun transition uh, for the city of Omaha to, to have the Villanovas and Marquettes and Georgetowns and everybody else roll through our building and you play these great teams year after year. Uh, but fortunately, we, we had some, an, an administration with the foresight to make sure we were prepared to do that when it happened. 
For you as a coach, what do you think the biggest difference is between when you were taking this job in 2010 versus where your mindset is right now? Well, I mean, recruiting has changed. Uh, uh, you know, it's different when you go from the Valley to the Big East. You, you know, our, it's more of a national, and in some cases, international footprint from a recruiting standpoint. Uh, and, and now, even the last two years, with name, image, and likeness and immediate eligibility uh, for transfers, it's totally changed the complexion of recruiting, and it's frankly changed my job. So, you know, it, it's having the ability to kind of adapt as the, the rules of the game have changed uh, from a recruiting standpoint. And, you know, I've got a coaching staff that's been at the forefront of that stuff and thinks outside the box. And as a result, you know, we've been able to attract not just really good players, but good people that fit our culture to our program. And as a result, they're a lot of fun to coach. Biggest keys for the season for you as a coaching staff and also for all your players to, you know, not give in to those expectations, play their own game, focus on what they're doing. What's your biggest message for your yeah, team? Yeah, I mean, the f number one, and we discussed it before, it's an unselfish approach to what we're doing offensively. Mm -hmm. Like, make plays for your teammates, and you'll be surprised how that'll come back to you ten times over. And then the second thing would be, you know, defensively we have to be elite. You know, we, we have to make sure that we're forcing our opponents to take the shots that we want them to take, not the shots that they want to take. And we got very good at that uh, the last six weeks of last season, and, and uh, we need to get back to that point as quickly as we can. Well, Coach, I know all of Omaha will be rooting for you guys. Good luck this season. Thanks Thank for your time. Thank you very much.